Hey, what is up, guys? It's your boy Speeder, and today we're watching an EU solo rank game. We're gonna be doing a live analysis. Oh, they go on to the sniper. So basically, what I want to do here today is just talk about all of my thoughts as the sniper tries to get away with the stampede to no avail. This is a pretty close game. I was just watching it for fun, and I'm like, why am I not just like I'm having all these thoughts about how these players could play better, what I think they're doing well, what they're not, and so yeah, I just want to talk to you guys about Dota 2 and playing good Dota 2 and bad Dota 2 so you can improve at the game. So either way. Let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like actually you want to become much, much better at Dota and you want to take it more seriously. The Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank and I'll see you there. I was largely watching this Lesh. I was really interested because um, I specifically tuned into this game to watch my friend Albino, but uh, yeah, this Lesh is having a great game. He's 12 and two. He's against a Sniper, which I think is a pretty tough matchup for Lesh on average, but he's doing great. And he's actually one of the lowest ranks in the game. So I was like, is he lucky? What's going on here? Uh oh, no, that's a waste of the Bloodstone. So talking about lucky, if you're gonna die, if it's close, you should save your Bloodstone for the second life just to make sure that they can't kill you in the second life as well. But with the Sniper dead, this might be a, oh no. <laughs> Oh, it's a disaster. As the Ember buys back. Holy shit. All right, so yeah, let's just watch some Dota. Let's watch some Dota together. So in terms of items, he's actually going for a build that I really like this game. The enemy does not have a vessel. Looks like the Marana was buying it, which I think is the correct decision. If you see that Leshrac doesn't go for BKB and instead he doubles down on spell lifesteal, Vessel actually counters these items pretty hard. Right, because he doesn't have any way to get rid of the HP uh, or lifesteal reduction. So I do like the Vessel from Rana. She's just really poor, really, really poor, which is kind of unfortunate. Otherwise, this build would be not neutered, because he's honestly tanky enough where he might not even die if he gets Vesseled, but still would be a problem. And okay. All right. All right. On top of that, we got Solo, VP's position 5 player on the safe lane Dawnbreaker. He's playing um, a pretty good game as well. He is being, you know, he's... Honestly, the reason why I like the, the safe lane Dawnbreaker this game is it enables Leshrac, right? Leshrac is one of those mid laners that wants to take up a lot of space, take the jungle creeps where Dawnbreaker, while she can play that way where she takes a bunch of jungle creeps and farms with her spells, she can also play in a way in which she just kind of farms up the map, right? She can just farm up the map, push in the waves, and uh-oh, there's probably sniper follow-up to that. Yeah, there's the sniper follow-up. We saw the sniper up here earlier, so a bit of a risk on his part, and uh, oh my gosh, he almost lived. However, they're going to get punished hard for that. Sniper BKB, he has to TP. He'll dust up. He chase on Sanking. I don't... Okay, he's stunned because he has Yules to cancel TP, so that's why he's stunned. They'll just find the Marana. He could probably hunt the Centaur. Centaur went down. No, okay, won't find the Centaur. So, not great for them. Good pick off from the enemy team. Opened up the map. Oh, TP? They're not going to catch. All right, so fight breaking out top. The main thing the Lesh has to keep in mind is who can disengage from his go. So even there, I don't really like his blink in. Yeah, this is a big mistake in my opinion. I Thankfully, the sniper's not here. The enemy team seems to have like somewhat given up to a point, but you never want to really blink in like that on Lesh onto a hero like Marana. It's just it's just an issue, right? It's a big mistake because you're not going to be able to burst the kill, right? You're just going to get gone on. And especially if you go on something like Marana, even if you get gone on, usually you would be able to pop your bloodstone and heal on the person you go on. With Marana, that's not going to be the case unless you hit a blind stun. Very unlikely, right? You know, hopefully she has the reaction time to get out of the way of that. And so, yeah, if the sniper was actually playing the game, that could have been a pretty throwy decision. I don't know, maybe they had information that he was bottom. They do have that deep ward, so perhaps it was an educated decision to go under the tower, but just be careful about that, guys. When you blink in on any hero in Dota, typically, not always, but a good rule of thumb is if you can't burst them, if you can't actually kill them, or at least poke them to a good HP pool, then don't go on them, right? If you can, let's say he could go on that Marana, drop her to a third health, and then disengage, fine. But the problem is, as long as she reacts in a decent amount of time, it's not going to happen. Maybe he'll do a third of her health. Right? It's not worth it to put yourself, you know, deeply out of position. Because the main targets he should be going on is really either Sniper, if Sniper doesn't have Pike. So Sniper has Pike now, which makes it a little bit less good. If, you know, to be fair, the Pike range, if Lesh um, goes behind the Sniper, is not great, right? Because it's still just four staff. So if Lesh blinks behind Sniper, maybe he could go on Sniper, even with Sniper having BKB just to force it out, because then he can pop Nihilism during the BKB duration and kind of burn it. So that's an option for the Lesh in the fights. But yeah, I would like to see the him to just follow up Sand King's stun. That's their best play. That's their chain stun. That's what they want to play off of. Oh, I don't, why is he walking up the hill? He's got to be careful. Let the Sand King go. Let the Sand King go. Sniper has night vision. Don't do this. All right, they'll find the Marana. It's okay. 
Yeah, but now Sniper's gonna go in. Maybe this is an okay fight anyway. He's got the Nihilism, so he'll be okay. He can really just penetrate the backline. There's no threat, no magic damage whatsoever, right? Really, there's literally zero magic damage on the enemy. Once Marana dies, there's no threat to him at all. So, okay, he'll go in. I like that, right? He's very confident, understanding his power spikes. Once the Marana's out of the fight, as long as he clicks Nihilism, he's not gonna die, because there's no chain stun, right? Honestly, even if he got chain stun, they could global and he probably still wouldn't die. So I like his confidence. He understands that his team, he should have trust in his team and can play around them. And oh, he might find the sniper here. Looks like sniper knows. They probably have a ward because the sniper is playing like he knows. He even put good game well played in the chat. So uh, he most certainly knows. <laughs> I love what people do. I don't know. I think it's funny. <laughs> so let's shift to bottom side. I would like to see him just, I don't know. Okay, this could be an engagement. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind him telling Sanking to collapse here. He needs to ping the Sand King to tell him to collapse. Uh-oh, he's just gonna get dueled. He didn't ping the Sand King. Sand King didn't shift over and... Oh, that's so bad. That's the gem as well. If you're gonna make that play, tell your team you're going. I don't know if he... It didn't look like he was pinging. Because usually you can see pings. In, in the live... Why wouldn't you ping? If your teammates aren't gonna connect, don't make the play. Right? You can't just do that. You can't just walk in alone. You gotta have awareness. Oh, that's such a mistake. That could cost them the game, and the arrow comes in. That's going to get vision. They got to kite out. Oh, no. Why would they not get out? The arrow comes in, and they didn't really really react. It gives AoE vision around it. And... Uh-oh. All right, they got to disengage. So, game turns around. Sniper coming into play. This sniper hero, man. Dawnbreaker carry does not outscale sniper carry, I assure you. They're both strong, don't get me wrong, but sniper's going to put in work, and... All right, are they going to go high ground here? They have really good high ground poke. If the enemy messes up, they could get chained into an arrow. No committal, and they can just, uh, they can make a play. Does Silencer have a four staff to deal with that? He does. So, okay, so the chain into arrow isn't guaranteed. But, oh, the duel. That's a confident duel, but I like it. There's no follow-up. There's no save. They, you don't want to dawn ulti. It's not going to save him. It's not enough healing. So they make the confident play. Dawn, she has, does she have BKB? Oh, that's not worth it, though. Why would you make that play? Oh, is that enough? No follow-up. Man, really bad synergy. I mean, the Dawn goes in, and maybe if the Dawn ulti's on top of that Sand King stun, they could go, but the synergy's all over the place for these high MMR players here. And it's gonna cost them, right? Going in one by one, Silencer not respecting the duel. I love the play from Legion there. Even though the Legion's really poor, like, I, this Legion's having a bad game, trust me. Right, her net worth is pretty crap. Yeah, this is 32 minutes in. She's got nothing, but it doesn't matter, right? It was just a numbers advantage. So you guys know I'm not a fan of diving high ground, but if you're gonna do it, it's gotta be based off a numbers advantage and to make sure, and making sure that your team can follow up and th when the sounds are standing here if he's standing here and not like here this is a great jump easy follow-up quick easy efficient you can get out even if they buy back you can kite out right so oh my okay he turns it around with the q he's dead though dead for sure he has the dd no dead okay gets the gets the ember kill so i would say relatively even trade slightly longer death timer for the dawn but not not the end of the world but all right this sniper's gonna be a problem. They really don't have a lot of great stuns for the sniper. They have Sanking stun. It has to be followed up by Lesh stun. And they have pressed the attack. So I thought this game was in a bad spot, but they have now the vessel for the Lesh. Okay. He still does not have a dispel. So that vessel, it's a problem. It's absolutely a problem. He'll probably even use the lifesteal item here. Yeah. And I don't mind it, but he's gotta be careful, right? He's gotta be careful. That vessel, I'm telling you guys, it could become a problem for him if he's if he goes too far. He farmed that creep wave inefficiently. He should have auto attacked the flag bearer, not the rage creep. It's fine. Okay. Smoke coming out. Bump into Legion. Sanking could just go on the Legion. He could have defensive blinked. Instead, he hesitates, and that, that's going to make him get dueled. Huge hesitation from Sniper there. He maybe could have went on. I mean, Legion is not a great target, but it's better than getting dueled. I mean, you got to make up your mind. And, oh my gosh, this game is collapsing. They were stomping the entire time I was watching in the early game. I know you guys have been only watching for like seven minutes with me, but this game has not been close. And... I really don't like the Sand King's item build here. I think he should be itemizing to make sure he can get off multiple rounds of stuns. And for instance, the Sanjin Kaya is just, I mean, it makes you tanky, but I'd rather just have him see a, have a, have him get a Halberd, right? Maybe you can blink on the Sniper and then Halberd him when he's going to be, right before he BKBs, right? When the stun's going to end. And that's going to be a big problem for the Sniper. So I, I personally would like to see a build like that. It also just makes you way tankier against the Sniper and the Legion and even Ember. Um, and not too much in Ember, let's be real, but... Uh, I, I don't even like the chainmail very much. I don't think it makes you that tanky against... Uh, it doesn't make you tanky against Headshot or Mjolnir Prox. Let's just gonna go in, but that's not a clean blink. What is he doing? You can't do that. That's what I talked about earlier. You can't go in unless it's gonna be clean, and that's not clean at all. He tries to snipe the Aegis, but why would you do that with your team respawning? Can they clean up? The sniper's getting low, gets frostbitten. He'll have to disengage, but he can turn now. They've created the distance necessary, and 
Oh no, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's it's like a Dota Sin 101 going in with no follow-up on a hero like Lesh that can't instant stun someone. He had Hex, but I don't even think he had Hex at the moment. Even if he did, I don't, I'm not sure that play would have worked, even if he actually could have Hexed someone. And uh-oh, I'm not gonna lie. I was impressed with this Lesh the whole game. These last couple of minutes, I've been very not impressed. His decision-making is subpar, for sure. These blinks in are not clean. I'm telling you guys, when you're playing a hero like Glesh that isn't the initiator, you gotta have a little bit of patience, or you gotta make sure you're blinking on someone with the Hex. And that has not been the case the last few goes, and it's really costing him. Sanking, cutting the top wave, it's a good play, stop the game a bit. I'm kite out now. Blinking to the trees, no TP though. Ember could hunt him. I doubt he is, but he could. So, I wouldn't even mind if he goes back and cuts the next top wave with his next blink. I doubt the enemy will, will, will think about him doing that, so... I wouldn't mind uh, seeing him cut the top wave, I think he should. No way you just TP back, your team's dead. Cut the next wave. Cut the next wave, cut the next wave, what are you doing? Cut the next wave. It's right here. It's right here. What? Cut the next wave, why are we... He's TPing back, but it's not like there's anyone for him to stun, his team's dead. He just cut the wave and then TP. Alright, I don't know, that's just an efficient play. Because it could, it could let him uh, get closer to his item plus buyback too. That's just a bad play. But alright, they're gonna look for the Ember. Right, he can blink in. The blink stun is an easy play. Why in... Oh. Oh, okay, he's Lincoln's. So they pop the Hex? It's not enough. Not enough. Okay. Duel comes out. The Sniper had to disengage. They get the, the global. Oh my gosh, the Sniper has a DD Daedalus and then Lesh just straight up dies. Nihilism was on cooldown. <laughs> the Dawn dies too. Frostbite comes out. They put the Lincoln's on Sniper. He's not going to die. It's a complete disaster. Wow. They can't get the clean jump. They try in the Ember. They don't get him. The Lesh used his Hex on the Lincoln's, which is a longer disabled than Sanking stun by quite a lot. Um, the Sanking Stun does damage, but I think you'd prefer to Hex. I mean, I don't know. They could also even, they could also blink Yules there uh, to pop the Lincolns and then Stun, which is potentially gives Ember time to react. But wow, this game, I mean, this is not what I expected from this video. I expected them to just take this game and, and run away with it. But this Sniper Hero, man, it's one of my favorite heroes in Dota right now. Every time I watch it, if the enemy messes up even slightly, you just get obliterated. I don't know, it's this... It's these, it's these talents. It's these talents. This 30 attack speed at 15, headshot damage at 10, and then 28 knockback distance. This knockback distance, you can't move, dude. Like, you get headshot, headshot, headshot. You can't chase the sniper, and you can't move. You just get stuck. It's like a perma slow. I don't know. This sniper hero, every time I see it, it's crazy. Especially, I don't know why he doesn't have a shard. I really think he should pick up the shard. To be fair, him not buying the shard and prioritizing Daedalus... Uh, seemingly really paid off there. I mean, that Lesh died. With that DD Daedalus, that Lesh died so fast. And that's the problem with Lesh's build. He has Nihilism. That's the only defens defensive option he has. He doesn't have a Yules. He doesn't have BKB. He didn't go Lincolns, right, for uh, the duel. So he went like a pretty pretty all-in build, which, um, which can be okay because you do a lot when you go in. But the these jumps are not clean enough to get away with it, right? They're not getting on top of the Sniper. They need to get on top of the Sniper. They still could win this game. No, they can't. They got Mega, I just realized. Okay, they're almost guaranteed to lose. Wow, what a crazy game. Albino wants to keep going. I don't blame him. I mean, I feel like you can play this game. It's You're almost guaranteed to lose, but you could play. The Sniper's a pretty, pretty kill. You can pop this Lincoln's and burst him pretty easily. Yeah, there they go. Okay, look at the kill. Oh, press the attack comes out. But he turns on Nihilism, which makes that the Dawn can't do any damage to Sniper, which is kind of the questionable part about this Ags. And, well, okay, never mind. They can't win. This game's done. Wow, crazy. This video is going to be shorter than I thought, not in the way that I thought. And that's Dota. You make it. That's the thing, though, guys. Like, I want you to see even the high, high MMR players, they make mistakes. Like, I'm not perfect either. Don't get me wrong. There's things I'm going to miss constantly, but I don't mean to pick on Lesh too much. I'm not trying to hate on this guy. I'm, it's just who I watch. And I, you know, it's for the sake of improvement. He just didn't make the right jumps. A couple jumps in a row. It doesn't take a lot. I mean, when you're the majority of your team's damage, you, you have the responsibility on your shoulders to have the discipline to jump with the, the Sand King. They didn't do it a couple times in a row. They tried on the Ember, which was fine, but they didn't kite out afterwards. They kind of just kept playing near the tier two after messing up the kill. He gets dueled a couple times in a row, especially under that tier two top, and they lose. And as I said, he was the lowest MMR player on his team, but not really in the game. Either way, I don't know, crazy match. Crazy, crazy match, but that's Dota. Such a fun game. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you like these type of analysis. If you do, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Because otherwise, I'm not sure if I, I'll make too many more. I, I don't know. Maybe I will. I personally really like making them. I think they're really educational, entertaining, and so on. But all right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out.
Peace.